again to Rubio Image Focus. My name is Angel Sanchez, founder of Rubio Image, fashion consultant, wardrobe coordinator. Today we're going to get a little bit more into the cravatology. So what, what I mean by that is we're going to talk about the neckwear, the necktie. So I've got five different uh, colors here and I've got uh, almost five different patterns to choose from. The, the pin dot, my personal favorite pattern, uh, in any scale really. Both of these, this is more of a micro dot and it's gold. And this is more of a Macclesfield. Now Macclesfield was a very, very popular tie back in the 30s and 40s. And uh, of course it derived from England. And there was a town, I believe in England, uh, the name Macclesfield. And so that's where it, uh, it derived its name from. Macclesfield is a wonderful pattern. It's kind of like a crisscross making little ch uh, simple uh, miniature triangles, almost like a, a diamond. And so uh, that's a wonderful pattern. Um, I, I especially like uh, the color, and the different colors it's throwing in there. Now, this is another micro dot variation. As you can see, there are dots. There's a micro dot, there's like a mini dot, and this is a, a more of a pin dot with more spacing. And they're all silk ties, and here's a paisley, and paisley is it, still popular. Fashion experts out there make a big deal about how many folds you want in a tie. I actually asked a tailor how many folds in a tie uh, when it comes to the, the tie that he was selling in his own establishment there. There were three folds. And so, you know, he had them very high priced. But the three fold tie, you, there's not much to it. It's going to be very flimsy, very thin. It may lay, lay well and lay very nicely up against your, your chest and against your stomach, but at the same time, you, you want a little bit more fabric, so you want to look something for a four, either a four-fold or greater, up to a seven-fold. The seven-fold's too much for me personally, because the knot is so hard to get to where it's nice and thinned out. It looks bulky, even in a foreign hand. So you want to choose between a four and a five-fold tie. You want to look for a slip stitch in your tie. Why? First of all, the slip stitch it's going to go ahead and it's going to give the tie give because once you pull and you yank you want the tie to be able to move to give it to give it a little spacing here's the slip stitch right here right here it's the little piece of string underneath the two folds the folds and so that's what gives the tie the mobility the, the flexibility to be able to stretch but still come back and reshape itself to retain its form you can have ties that are self-tipped and self-tip means that they've used pretty much one basic pattern to make that tie, to create that tie, to create the folds. They keep folding and folding and folding, and they don't introduce another piece of pattern into that one tie. This tie right here is not self-tip. You can see that they introduced another pattern. See how different it is from the blue right here? Either or is good. It's fine, really. One thing I like to do is I either tie one on my, around my neck in the store, We'll make this half loop. And you can somewhat tell whether it'll create, it'll help you create some sort of a dimple. It's kind of tough, but at the same time, you get some idea. If you're going to have a knot that's going to slide, and what you want to do is, when creating that knot, that tie, or that dimple, put your finger right here in the middle. And now you see that? You see that crease right? You see that? That indentation? That's it. That's how you create that. You put your finger in there and you can work it, you can massage it and create that dimple. And then you pull down and you pull up. Yeah, it's just working a nice piece of dough right there into a nice round loaf. That's really what it is. When you're done making your necktie, your knot, you slip it to the back. And so what you want, you want this look here. You don't want the back length the back to be longer than the front. Some people would think that's uh, that's very fashionable. I, I consider it very clumsy and uh, not uh, not very well put together. And so you want it the look to be like this, like myself here. And also, when when considering wearing a necktie, let me make this plain. I have seen neckties go way beyond the belt. You want the necktie to be at the belt buckle, okay? Maybe a little bit above or right at it, all right? Because you don't want to um, interrupt what is going on here. You want your, your pant to be fully uninterrupted. 
You want that flow to continue beyond your belt buckle. You want to look at your complexion and your hair color. The tie should accentuate that. In other words, it should uh, bring it out. You want the eyes always to be pushed up to your face, be driven up to your face because you don't want the tie and its loudness to be a distraction. You want people to look at your face and not at the tie. If the silk tie that you are holding in your hands, if it feels good, purchase it because it probably is a very good tie and it feels good. If it looks good with what you are putting uh, the tie coordinating it together with in terms of a shirt and a jacket, I would go ahead and buy it. The one thing I look for though, regardless of the price and regardless of the name brand, I always make a knot right there at the store because if I don't get that well made dimple that allows the tie to stand out instead of limp, I don't purchase it. I make sure that I can tie a very good knot, a four in hand knot, and still produce a wonderful dimple that they give my knot a little life. In other words, where it doesn't rest up in a very limp, fishy type of way up against my chest. I want to thank you for stopping by. Once again, to Rumi Image Focus, any more questions that you might have, please email me at angel at rubioimage.com. You can also visit my Facebook page at uh, Facebook slash Rubio Image, and I'll have lots of information there. I always give attribution to those websites that I link to, and I thank them for their creativity, putting it together and allowing me to use it. And so uh, I hope you enjoyed this segment.